<laughs> now, as you know, we have so many students here, and we ask them to send their questions, and we've got a, about 1,200 of them. So we've chosen a few, okay, for you to answer. So if we can move to the first student, uh, Sheikh Mohammed Samir, can we have your question, please? Sir? Yeah, over there in that corner, Morning, Sheikh sir. Mohammed Samir. Uh, you must just sit here, so you know how glad we all are about you. Every student is anxious about your replies, and professors are happy that a student of theirs is in such a position. I want to ask, like, every student aspires to be in a respectable position. So when did you feel that you reached a checkpoint? Like, when did you feel, yeah, I'm going to change from an alumnus to a distinguished alumnus? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't get to make that decision. I think it's a, it's a decision by the, you know, faculty here. Uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, I always approach it as, uh, you know, I, I look, look to do something I really like doing. You know, I'd always wanted to build, build products. And, you know, in my life, getting access to computing made a big difference. And, you know, so I've always wanted to work on computing, uh, you know, build, uh, build computing products, which could reach many, many users. And so, and so, you know, and that's what I've been focused on. And so I think, you know, it's, it's, an, it's an end result of that, so. Okay, uh, can we have another question from Chiranjeev Singh Rathor? Yeah, over there. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, sir, my question was, uh, like, we are students and uh, you, you are very humble, but there must be some crazy things you've done when you were in campus. So any of those memories? Uh, what are the craziest things you did at IIT You mean crazier than calling somebody away Saleh in the gym? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, I mean, look, I mean, I, I, you know, I think I had my share of uh, all the experiences uh, which all of you go through, uh, you know. Uh, staying late in the nights and missing classes in the morning, uh, but you know overall, you know we had a very very good group of uh, folks. I you know still, you know you know in a living in a campus like this, you come away from home far away for the first time, uh, and you know my best memories are with my wingmates. You know you, mm -hmm. you develop close friendships and uh, and uh, you know visiting the strip in Bangalore, I got to see a few of my old uh, character classmates. Uh, so good memories. Oh wow. So shifting gears a bit, I mean, 10 years after you left IIT, you joined Google. It was 2004 uh, or 5? 2004. Four. Yeah. And 10 years later, you were running Google, the world's most innovative technology company, right? The Google products just grow on you. You know, Google Search, YouTube, Android, Maps. What is it that drives innovation at Google? You know, I, you know, I think we've always, uh, you know, we've always had an ambitious approach to it. Uh, you know, we, we call it internally as, uh, you know, 10x or moonshots. We try to work on things which, uh, you know, the criteria we think is we want to work on things which people will use every day. Mm -hmm. It will apply to billions of people, and it solves a real problem for them. So that's the bar. So anything we try to do, we, we think of it that way, and so we aim high. We try to use deep computer science to anything we approach so that we can make, uh, have a differentiated approach to solving it. And you, know, and you want to aim high enough that you fail uh, you know, a few times. I think that's the natural part of the process. Uh, in fact, you know, Larry used to say, if you aim, if you work on really difficult things, you're better off because you have no competition. Others aren't working on yeah. uh, that difficult yeah. a problem. And even if you fail, you end up doing something great in the sure. process. And so I think that's the philosophy which has guided us all through these years. Yeah, you've been talking uh, lately a lot about machine learning and AI. You know, uh, AI was talked about even 25 years ago when I was at IIT and when you were at IIT. What has changed in the last two or three years? Uh, Why has AI become suddenly and machine learning suddenly become the new buzzword? I mean, I think the biggest advances you're seeing uh, is, is largely due to uh, you know, two things. The techniques which we use in deep learning, uh, deep neural networks, uh, have been around for many years, but early on, you know, they weren't that effective because you just didn't have the computational power to run, uh, run these algorithms. Uh, you know, just uh, for the past many years, uh, the computational power has dramatically increased. So when you run uh, deep learning on the latest computation and with access to better data, you get dramatic breakthroughs. So for example, we recently launched uh, Google Translate, mm -hmm. and you know, this is machine translation. And, and, and using our deep learning systems, the translation quality improvements just in the last year is bigger than what we've seen in the past 10 years cumulatively. Wow, wow. So it tells us that you know, the ability for computers to do these kinds of tasks 
be it image recognition, speech recognition, voice recognition, it's really hitting a tipping point. So I think you know, we are definitely in a point of inflection, and we are investing a lot as a company here. And you know, I can't wait to get these benefits to as many users as possible. I think it'll really drive the next wave of computing. Excellent. You know, uh, you were in Bangalore. Uh, you met startups in Bangalore. And uh, I heard you say that uh, there's nothing really missing as far as startups in India go. They're as good as startups elsewhere in the world. But there's one thing which sort of, uh, you know, we also invest in startups and we face this problem as well ourselves as a company, that the Indian market is not large enough to invest a lot in technology. So, you know, so how do you, in a situation like this, compete with MNCs, which have large investments in technology? No, I think it's a good question. Uh, I think part of the problem is uh, in India, you know, the, the potential is there and the market is developing. I think it'll take a few more years for it to fully realize the potential. You know, for all its potential, we get excited about smartphones, but we are talking a, a number of 300 million in a country of 1.3 billion people. Yeah. And, and, and not all of them have good connectivity as well. So I think the market, the digital market is still developing. And so that's the problem you run into. And yeah. so as companies getting built here, it's difficult to scale across India and reach that full potential, which gives you the resources to go compete internationally. But I think it's just a moment in time. Uh, you know, I, uh, you know, hopefully Indian companies are more thoughtful about, you know, when they build stuff, also targeting similar areas like Vietnam and Indonesia and Thailand. I think those markets are developed and, you know, and the same products would, would work in those markets as well. So I think they need to set their sights a bit bigger. Uh, but it's a good question. Uh, but I think the trend lines are strongly in the favor. I think every year I can see the, uh, the rate yeah. at which things are changing. Yeah. So in about three to four years, you know, I wouldn't be, you know, I'm pretty convinced at least in a five to ten year time frame that there will be big global uh, you know, software companies coming out of India and we will be very used to it. So when these guys graduate and when they want to build the next Google, they should build for the international market as well and not just for the Indian market? Yeah, I, mean, I, would, I would aim big and you know, I definitely think you can build from India and, and we, we see that uh, at Google, increasingly there are things which we think about building for the Indian market but we, which we think will apply globally. Yeah. And there are 5,000 engineering colleges in India and many other institutions. So what is your, sitting where you are, I mean, what would you recommend to them? How should they be looking at education? How should they be, they be thinking about education going forward? You know, I think, you know, it's, it's, you know, one of the great things about India is this tremendous interest in education. You know, people talk about it all the time. You know, most parents aspire for this for their uh, children. And so I think it's a great foundation we have as a country. I think education needs to evolve and, and change just like with everything else. Uh, you know, in my experience growing up here, I think there's a lot of emphasis on you know, spending time on the books and, you know, learning yeah. things academically. Yeah. I think, you know, working the real world, I would say, you know, it is important to be well-rounded. It's important to, uh, you know, try different things. I, I, you know, take some risks. Uh, you know, I would encourage people to, uh, you know, follow their passions a little bit more. I think one of the, you know, for, for all the great things about the Indian educational system, I think there's a lot of pressure to follow set lanes uh, throughout your uh, career, you know, you're in high school, you're thinking about college. You know, I get very surprised people come to IITs and immediately they are thinking about IAMs and so on. Yeah, you know, I, yeah. think, I think it's important to get real world experience. And if you take uh, the US, for example, at a place like Stanford, most students don't choose their majors till their, uh, you know, final year. So people explore different things and, and find what they're really passionate about. So I think those are all, you know, good things to aspire to. Uh, I think, you know, I would like to see uh, people, you know, people value creativity, value experience of doing things, uh, taking risks. And, uh, you know, um, academics is important, but it is not as important as yeah, it's also yeah. made, made out to be. So you would want people to, and, you know, institutes to focus a lot more on experiential learning, project work, internships, stuff like that, to get real life experience. Yeah, I, th I think know. that matters a lot. That matters I think a people lot. should be encouraged to take risks a little bit more and, and try different things till yeah. they find what yeah. they like doing. Yeah. Yeah, and things have changed. It's okay to fail even in India now. Oh, I, I absolutely think, you know, look, it's remarkable to be at uh, IIT. Uh, there are many, many great people who don't make it in, and you will see this later in life. People do well from all walks of life. Uh, I think it's important to remember, uh, you know, uh, getting into an elite institution doesn't guarantee success. Mm -hmm. uh, it matters a lot, but it doesn't guarantee success. 
and uh, you know, I think I think that's, it's important to keep that perspective in life. And uh, you know, yeah, life is a long road, yeah. and uh, you know, so you want to you want to take it at the right pace and enjoy what you're doing. Can we take one more question from Nishchal uh, Kutarekar? Uh, hi, Sundar. Okay, here he is. <coughs> hey, hi. 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 My question is, uh, how much power you have as a CEO of Google? Can you change the Google Doodle to IIT KGP building for a day? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to send a message to the team. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, <laughs> before you get too excited, I mean, the good news is Google is set up in a way. Uh, I think even if I send that email, they wouldn't do it. And here's the reason why. You know, I think we have, you know, we, we build an organization with strong ideals and values on when we show doodles for what occasions. And uh, it's less about what I want to happen as much as, you know, we have a set of rules to go by. Uh, but, you know, uh, I mean, uh, KGP definitely deserves celebration and, you know, look forward to doing it in the most uh, thoughtful way possible. So, you know, for a lot of the students here, you are their role model. They idolize you, right? A lot of them would give a lot to be in your shoes. So, you know, I'm sure growing up, you had to work hard in school, you prepared for IIT, then you got into IIT, you spent four years here, you went overseas, a lot of people in IIT dream of going overseas for an education. So what are some of the tips that you would like to share with students out here? Oh. You, know, I, I, you know, I think I kind of answered it uh, earlier. Um, you know, I would, you know, I would really encourage people to, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of pressure in today's system. Uh, you know, I, I, I get surprised people start preparing for IIT in their eighth grades, and you know, <laughs> that's that's a bit shocking to me. Uh, I, you know, I, uh, I I hope, you know, I hope, uh, you know, you know, as people are approaching things, they are really taking the time to doing things, you know, in a deeper way. You know, understanding things deeper, uh, learning by doing things, and uh, you know, I think it's important to remember it's a long road. Setbacks actually don't matter. Uh, you know, I think a lot of times when I was younger, you know, people would say, you know, this person didn't get into this college or something, and that's the end of the road. I mean, life is so different from that. And so I think it's important to, you know, uh, keep your hopes, keep your, keep your dreams, and try to follow them. And, you know, I think, I think most of how life plays out is up to you, not up to, uh, up to what happens uh, outside of you. And I think it's important to keep that in mind and take the long-term view. Great. Uh, we'll now move on to what is called a rapid fire round. Ah. Have you seen Coffee with Karan ever? Ah. Uh, here and there, on YouTube. Okay. How do you spend your free time? Free time. Do you have free time? Uh, <laughs> definitely. You know, I have, I have young kids, so I try to spend it, uh, spend it with them. Uh, I love watching cricket and soccer. Uh, if I get a chance, I do that too. So I uh, try to stay in touch with friends and family. How, how old are the kids? Uh, 13 and 9. 13 and 9. Okay, this one is a tricky one from Amol Sakhle. What was your GPA at IIT? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, w I would say, uh, I'd, you know, too embarrassed to admit it after my first year, uh, but really good the next three years to make up for it. So that's all I would say. So there's hope. <laughs> year one students, if your GPA is low, there's still hope. <laughs> Okay, this one is from Surajit Mura Singh. Who was your idol during your BTEC days? Uh, you know, many, you know, I, uh, you know I, I would say many, many people. Uh, you know, I admired people from all walks of life. Uh, you know, this week I met Mr. Narayana Murthy, uh, had a chance to have uh, breakfast with them. Uh, admired people like that who put India really on the map uh, globally. Uh, you know, I love watching cricket, uh, love watching Tendulkar play. Uh, Tendulkar started playing when I joined IIT, so, you know, so things like that. Uh, the next one is from me. Okay, the next one is from me. Who's your favorite Bollywood actress? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, you, know, at, uh, you know, at Google, uh, you know, I had a chance to host and uh, interview uh, Deepika Padukone and Shah Rukh Khan. And, uh, oh. <laughs> so maybe Deepika Padukone. I used to wa I enjoy watching Prakash Padukone play badminton as well. So oh. combination of the two. And this one is from Fahad Shaheen. How can I replace you at Google? 
<laughs> I would tell him, be careful what you wish for. Uh, <laughs> but happy to discuss this with him over a cup of chai, so. Right, right. Okay, great. I think Sundar has been awesome talking to you. Thank you for taking the time out to be here with all these students. I'm sure they'll go back a lot more inspired. Okay. One last request. Can we have a selfie with everyone? Oh, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for taking the time and waiting here. And uh, it's been a great day. Thank you.